Hi, my name is Chuck. I'm one of the lead technicians here at Colo Tech on the telecom side. This video is an introduction of the tools that you're going to need in order to achieve your goal. This particular video outlines the basic tools that are needed for a single telecom tech to be able to pull a site upwards of 20 drops in 10 machines by him or herself um, within a three day or four day turnaround time. I typically can do a site, uh, I think the largest site I've done was 40 drops in two days with 14 computers. That's the patch panel rack switches, pulling out all the old computers, putting in new computers, running scripts, um, testing all the lines, and then I'm out. So total man hours of time or labor for that project was like 31 hours in two days. But uh, basically, uh, um, as you can see, I've consolidated. I used to carry a large Pelican case. I'm able to get everything in my uh, trusty little backpack, which makes it a lot easier when you're traveling. Um, I'm a diamond, so I get three 70 pound bags, but to that, uh, my total tool weight right now is around 30 pounds. Um, the benefit is, is uh, you can breeze in and out. Unfortunately, because there's a lot of power tools, I have to check my bags, but these are some of the tools that you're gonna need, or these are the tools that you're gonna to need to be able to accomplish a full site uh, rollout or conversion or completion you know, by yourself. So let's start over here. Um, we have my basic fluke tester, which is in the uh, black case here. Um, it, or not fluke tester, but my uh, tone generator to be able to find the line. I got a series of bits. Um, sorry for the paper covering it up, but um, I used a Bosch bits. Um, they're very sturdy. Um, they're able to bust nails inside of wood. Then I got my Makita bit set. Uh, basically, these are a mixture of standard and metric bits that I've accumulated over the years. So no matter if I'm breaking down a computer, putting up a rack, putting together a server, the bit um, is going that I need is going to be in that kit. Right here, this little blue square box. This is used for the cutout rings or D-rings. Um, I basically went and put a level on it, so as I'm tracing it out right before I cut it out, um, I'll make sure that uh, it's level. There's my micro tester. Um, to the right of that is my yellow pick for the patch panel. To the right of that is the stud finder for deep studs, electrical studs, and metal studs. I'm gonna roll up uh, two things that are really important are the um, marker and my pen. I can't live without them, you definitely need them. Right above that is the orange cable. In the upper left hand corner of that orange cable is a very high power magnet. What I do is I cut a hole above the ceiling towel, stick the orange cable with the magnet on the inside, I take the magnet on the top, on the outside of the wall and I drag my line down to the bottom and that's how I fish a wall in some cases when there's not drywall or when there's not uh, insulation inside the wall. That uh, orange, reddish orange uh, cylinder or ball to the right, that's basically a metal stud finder, but I use that to drop that down the wall to get my line in. I'll tie a uh, fish, uh, put a string on it, and then I'll pull it straight through. So I use that for two purposes. Right here is my Fluke Rapid Jack. Um, basically, it's an 8 to 1 type setup versus you punching down 8 wires. I can punch down 1 wire in the same amount of time. Moving over to these top three items right here, um, that's uh, uh, for coax. So I can uh, strip a wire, crimp a wire, and then the middle device is testing. Right now, if you're starting off, you're really not going to need these. These are for specialty sites that uh, we actually are working on. And I can, uh, as you can see right below that, I'm going to have the very fall, small four inch level. Um, it gets the job done. You don't need a big long level. Uh, to the right of that, I got my RJ45 and RJ11 uh, rapid crimp um, as well. Um, and wire stripper. It's an all-in-one device. Move back over. Um, I have a tennis ball with some nylon string. I use that um, because I can go up into a ceiling towel, open the towel, throw that ball. It's got like a 10-foot string on it. Throw that ball seven or eight ceiling towels over when the structure is clear and then just go over and grab the cable. This helps uh, expedite the uh, uh, pool process. To the right of that, I have my 3M earplugs. To the right of that, I have the special curve snips. So as I'm cleaning up, uh, putting zip ties on the trunk in the server room, um, I use that to snip the edge. So as I'm rubbing around in there, it's not cutting my arms up, it's a smooth cut. To the right of that is my trusty uh, pocket knife. To the right of that, I use the Bosch uh, 50 foot laser tape. 
Um, this comes in handy when you need to see what uh, what your pole is going to be or how far uh, you need to go down. Uh, basically, you just put the laser light on it and it'll tell you a digital or give you the digital readout of how far it is. To that right to, to the right of that, I have my Milwaukee handsaw. Um, I use this for cutting out the uh, D rings or the cutout rings inside the sights. I'm gonna zoom out um, those two cylinders. Um, those are two two foot um, uh, push pull sticks, and I have five in each container. And then I have a old metal clothes hanger that I've cut the same width. And the reason that I use that is because I can reach into a hole and grab a cable with a little hook with that metal hanger. So if you come across a metal hanger, you want to keep it and throw that in your arsenal. The wire mesh, basically this is when I'm pulling a cable down or pulling a cable up, I'll slip that over the cable and as I pull on it, um, or as the cable is hanging, hanging down, um, that pressure is going to stretch it and tighten it. The tighter I pull, or the harder I pull, the tighter the uh, mesh gets on the cable to help me pull. The General is a probe, um, that, uh, that's a camera, and that probe up in the upper right hand corner, you're able to extend that into a hole up to four feet. And then you can turn it and twist to see what uh, what you're dealing with inside the wall. Below that is my wire stripper, which is the orange device. And then I have my uh, rugged um, walkie-talkies. I have two of those that I keep in the bag. I have a 10-foot uh, fairly solid. It's a steel uh, fish tape um, for going down a wall where there is insulation and the string just won't work or the push pulls won't work. And one thing I want to point out about the push pulls, you can get these at Grey Bob, but they're very very soft so they will allow you to extend your reach by 10 feet but when it comes to forcing it down a hole they they tend to bend but you want them because you can uh, I use typically when I'm drilling a hole I'll use a one inch paddle bit um, and I can bend this to curve through that one inch paddle bit and uh, pop it right back in and the other uh, type of uh, uh, push pull sticks are fiberglass so when you break those you got the splinters so you can get a splinter in your hand and it's, it's not not the best thing to work with right below that is uh, my uh, little three foot miniature tape uh, my handy spring loaded snips and another uh, rapid wire stripper below that is the bionic wrench I basically can take any bolt no matter the thread or if it's stripped and get it off with that wrench there um, those two little bits are basically pilot bits to where I can punch in uh, on a metal stud to get my screw started as I'm hanging something. To the right here, I have my Milwaukee Fuel. Um, this is a $500 drill, but this drill has four in one. It's a hammer drill, and of course, it has, it has the screw. It has the depth gauge, and it has the power pressure on it, um, and it's Bluetooth. So I can track my drill to see if I left it in the ceiling or where it's at, and I can send a signal as well. Um, I have a low, pro ba a low profile battery, so it's half the size of the traditional battery. I only carry one battery, that's all I really need. Um, typically, if you're on a site by yourself, you're not going to be going through any top caps on the stud, but if you are going to be doing some massive drilling, your partner um, should have his or her drill with her as well. This pouch here um, is the um, uh, electrical or the uh, surge protector piece that uh, um, we use to um, uh, battery recharger. I am so sorry. Um, it's is where I carry all my AAA and nine volt rechargeable batteries. You're going to go through a whole host of those. I have about 10 to 15 batteries in here. Um, and, uh, they are lifesaver from my lights, um, to the, uh, uh, micro tester to the toner. So definitely get you some rechargeable batteries because you will use them a lot. I'm going to move over here. Um, I have my uh, uh, pliers, wire stripper, um, and needle nose, uh, which is the red Milwaukee. Um, I have the cannon punch to the left of my red Milwaukee snips. And I have a little small uh, Phillips flathead screwdriver. And then I have my brown and black 10 in one drill. Now, that's going to be really important uh, being able to uh, swap it out on the fly. Uh, right above that is my Allen wrench set, which is a very, very small Allen wrench set. Um, and that definitely gets the job done. Um, and I think that's going to cover my uh, supply list. This is the bag that I use. It's got many compartments in it. I can literally fit everything inside this bag. Um, this pouch on the side is 
my mask um, and uh, a uh, bandana so when I'm working with uh, uh, working in the attic I can uh, cover my mouth and I keep it in there it's very secure I zip tied to the side of my bag I zip tied the uh, uh, zipper so it doesn't slide open during shipment and then I have an extra spare double zip tied uh, white tape I like to use color tape so I don't get it confused or I'll know if I pulled this or if someone else pulled it I just happen to use white and orange as my tapes um, once again this is a tool kit that um, is uh, gives you the capability to do a site by yourself you can have all the tools in the world um, and if you don't have proper planning and technique it's not going to do you any good um, if you have any questions uh, please reach out to your project manager and once again thank you and welcome aboard